Hi, Dr. Watson here to show you how to use an audio interface with GarageBand. This audio interface happens to be made by M Audio, but there's other brands like Focusrite and, um, and on and on. Um, a lot of manufacturers make them. Um, it's what converts the analog sound coming into a microphone into digital, and that takes it into um, GarageBand or any other digital audio workstation you're using. So, first thing, let's take the USB cable that comes out of the back of the M Audio. Uh, unit and we're going to plug that USB cable into the computer. All right, and GarageBand might actually give us a message, an alert message, saying, "Hey, I've detected that that you have a um, um, an audio interface." But right now, I'm not seeing that happen. So one way to check to see if it happened is to go to the GarageBand preferences. Uh, that's not available to us right now. We have to start a project. So um, to get here. Um, oh, down here though. Let's look here. Yeah, audio input M Audio Mobile Pre. That's exactly what we want, by the way. So you could choose the setup here before you even start, and that's a great way to, to choose it. And also, I want to caution everybody, uh, at least if you're in one of my classes, I don't like to use the M Audio um, for the audio out. We could actually hear the sound coming out of this unit, um, kind of it functioning like a sound card would in a computer. But instead, I'd rather have you use the built in sound on the computer as our sound card uh, like you normally would. So leave always make sure that is set to built-in uh, output at least in my classes. So I'm going to choose an empty project and choose that and the first thing we're going to do is set up a track. Now there's no tracks in this project so GarageBand is going to ask us what kind of track do we want and because we're using a microphone we're going to choose the microphone track. Um, I want to point out right here you could also get into the GarageBand preferences uh, the preferences that I wanted to, to get uh, before. Um, we could also choose to monitor our track by clicking on this box here. We can do all of that once we set the track up. So for now, let's go ahead and just click on the word create. So we've chosen microphone, create, and now it's setting up an audio track for us. And finally, I'm going to go to this GarageBand preferences and show you that this is another way you can get into that window. And again, output is set to built-in, input is set to our, our mobile pre. Now the mobile pre has two channels. Um, we're going to use channel 1, a mono recording. It has a trim control. This is where we do the channel 1 and the channel 2 um, volume setting, the input volume called the trim control. So we'll use that to adjust uh, the signal strength. And we're going to go ahead and plug in one of these, an XLR microphone uh, cable. Uh, the other end is already now in our microphone. I'm using an SM58, uh, mostly a vocal mic. It's a dynamic mic. Uh, so we plug that uh, together here. Could put it on a mic stand, but I don't have one right now. Um, and I'm going to plug the um, the male end um, to our audio interface uh, in, in channel one. All right, so that's already set up. And um, I want to also point out that this particular uh, interface has a, a button on it called Phantom Power. It's a 48 volt boost that you use for condenser mics. But since the Shure SM58 microphone that we're using today is a dynamic mic. We do not need to have the phantom power on. So our, our audio interface and our microphone are set up. Our hardware is set up. Let's go ahead and just um, check the track itself. Uh, testing one, two, testing one, two. Right now I'm talking into the microphone an inch or two away from it and I'm noticing that the volume units um, uh, the VU meter, volume units, the VU meter is popping up to around 40 or 50 percent. Test, test. When I talk hard it goes up to around 60 percent, but I'd like that stronger. So I'm going to adjust the trim control here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up. Test, test. And now it's going up to about 75 percent, which is about where I want it. So let's go ahead and do a sound check. Click on the record button. Uh, actually, let me turn them. Um, there's a click track. I don't need a click track and I don't need a count in. I'm just going to hit the record button. Test, test, test one, two. This is a test. I'm doing a sound check. Testing, testing one, two. And let's hear what that sounds like. Stop, rewind. Test, test, test one, two. This is a test. I'm doing a sound check. Testing, testing one, two. And let's hear what that sounds like. Stop. Okay, so that, that was actually very good. It never, um, it never distorted, never went into the distortion range. Now, there's some... Uh, buttons here I want to point out. This is the um, monitor. If you want to hear what your voice sounds like while you're recording, 
turn on the monitoring button. And now I'm actually hearing, and you should be too, the sound of the microphone processing my voice. That's what was recorded. So you could have monitoring on or off. Some singers like to hear their, 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 their or instrumentalists like to hear what it sounds like as they're playing or recording. Some don't. Now, if we're going to go a little bit deeper into GarageBand, um, we have to go to this area. Um, it's called Smart controls. And when you click on that, it opens up an area in the bottom. You can see some of the DSP plugins that GarageBand thinks when you set up an, a, a microphone track, it gives you the plugins that it believes you would want for that track, like compression, EQ, and reverb. So if I turn the reverb up, now I'm actually hearing a little bit of reverb, right? Or if I turn compression on and turn it up, it should be strengthening and sort of making more hearty and um, resonant my voice and if i wanted to uh, bring down my low end i could i could turn eq down low uh, bring up the highs and give a little more luster to my voice things like that or maybe bring down the high bring up the low and give a little more boom to my voice so i'm going to turn those off for right now and turn the reverb down but I wanted to show you those things. The main thing I want you to know about when you're working with an audio interface is this area right here called the inspector, the little tiny letter I. I kind of wish GarageBand, uh, the folks at Apple would have made that bigger, but I'm gonna click on it and you can see this is um, some important stuff. This is again where you choose uh, that you're gonna record into channel one of your interface. It's also where you can turn monitoring on or off turn it back on. You can turn on a thing called feedback protection. So if you happen to um, have a, a speaker that's um, picking up the signal, notice I'm using headphones so that nothing coming out of my computer is going back into the microphone except for the signal, which is my voice. Um, and that's why you use headphones. But uh, And you can also set the trim level here um, as well. Although I don't think um, with the M audio unit, it responds to this. I think you'd have to still use the trim controls that are actually on the unit. Let me uh, play around with the microphone distance so you can see. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two. So let's compare that. One inch. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, about testing, a foot. One, two. Testing, testing, about five one, inches. Two. Testing, testing, about one, one foot. Two. So not only, uh, if you, you look at the, the signal, not only does this is about one inch away, this is about a foot away. And somewhere around here, we went to about uh, five or six inches away and then back to about an inch. Um, not only does the sound of the signal uh, get softer, uh, but it also gets thinner. And when you bring the microphone closer, not only does the sound get louder, but it also has a, a greater um, uh, frequency components. It's richer, the spectrum of the sound is richer. So encourage your talent, encourage your instrumentalists uh, to get somewhat close to the microphone, but without uh, the mechanical noise of t and p. Right, so you have to use a pop filter if you're too close. And that's about all for using an audio interface with an XLR microphone. This happens to be a dynamic, not a condenser microphone, so it didn't need phantom power in GarageBand.